Hey guys, the objective of this video is to look at loath parts going from slab joists to girders to columns. We're then going to be looking at tributary area for beams and then we're going to be defining and looking at one way and the two way slabs and the major difference between the two. So just to start off with, we're going to have a typical structure like this. Okay, so it normally has a slab. Those, that slab is then supported by joists. So these joists over there, which are then supported by girders. So we have a girder here and a girder at the back over there. And then these girders will be supported by columns. All right, so it's got slab, joist, girder, column. Now, we're gonna break this down into each of those components and talk about the load path. So the first thing is the slab. Now, obviously a portion of the load from the slab is gonna to go to the joist. Now, what we do is, we're gonna start with the slab over here, all right? Now, this is a top-down view. So if I show you what we have, we have joist, 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 and slab. So there's joist, joist, joist in our slab. And we need to distribute this loading in the slab into some of the joists. Now, we call that the tributary area, okay? The tributary area is the area of the slab which goes into particular beams, okay? So, the blue over here and the blue over here. So if I were to draw in 3D, I hope it, it's quite obvious that this middle joist is going to take a portion of the middle section of the slab, say that portion there. This joist over there will take that portion and this joist over there will take that last portion, okay? So we just divide it up. So, say this was 10 meters, we would call this the distance from there to there 5 meters and the distance from there to there as 5 meters. We would then split that in two, so that would be 2.5, 2.5, 2.5 and 2.5 and this joist would take 2.5 plus 2.5, so 5 meters, and these two joists would take 2.5 meters of the slab there, okay? So I hope that's quite obvious. We're going to be doing examples where we actually do all this, but I just hope it's quite intuitive for now that the distribution of the slab will be taken in this type of pattern for the joists, okay? So this, some of the loading in the slab is going to be transferred into the joists, and if we look from above, it's going to look something like this, where this middle, uh, middle joist there takes this amount, the amount in red, and these two end joists, this end joist takes this amount of slab in blue, and this end joist there takes this amount of slab in blue there. Okay, and then we can distribute all the slabs into those joists. So if we were to take a typical joist, so say one of these joists here, it's going to look something like that. All right, we're going to get a UDL. So this is an area load, which is something like KPA, and we're going to have a UDL, which is going to be, say, kilonewtons per meter, all right, from this slab. Those joists are then supported by girders, all right? So if we look at the girders then, we're going to be getting three point loads from those joists. So those joist loads had UDLs. We're going to find the reactions on either side of those joists. So we have one, two, three joists hitting this girder. So we have point load, point load, point load, all right? All point loads. And then from all those point loads of the joist, we can work out the point loads in the columns, okay? So that's going to be the load path in the process. You go slabs to joists to girders, and then to columns. And I hope that the actions of area loads, kilonewtons per meter, UDLs, and point loads are quite obvious how you do that. Once again, this is just breaking it down. We're going to be looking at um, an example later on with numbers to make it a bit, to put it into a bit more perspective. But I just want to give you a bit of perspective behind this. Okay, so that's all for what we call for this type of structure, where it's quite obvious that the slab is supported by joists, joists on girders, girders on columns. This is where it becomes a bit trickier. Let's say we have a system like this. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a bit. So this system, we have columns, girders, joists, and slabs, just like before, except now the girders and the joists are in the exact same plane um, as each other. All right, so in the previous one, it was quite clear that the joists and girders were in separate planes. Joist um, was above girder. But in this one, the girder and the joists both feed directly into the column. Okay, so this is a bit different. So the load path and what goes on is going to be a bit different, and it's governed by something to determine. We need sorry to to work out the load path. We need to determine if this behave if this slab behaves as a one way or two way slab. So let's look at what that means now. So for a two way slab, pretending that we're looking at a section. Pretend there's a column here now, 
and a column here now, and this is closed off, okay? So we're looking at this portion over here where we have two joists and girders on either ends, okay? So just closing this off, we're putting a girder there, a column there, and a column there, all right? So looking down on that type of structure, we have this type of system. So we need to determine how this acts. For a two-way slab, what happens is, is that the uh, distribution of the slab feeds directly into the joists and girders. So it would look like this. So say we have a square section, it's going to go, the load is going to go there, 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 and there. It's called two-way because it's going in two directions. A rectangular shape would look like this, where these angles feed off at 45 degrees, forming trapeziums and triangles. Once again, two because it's going in two ways. However, like we've said, it could also beha potentially behave like a one-way slab. So a one-way slab is exactly how we saw before. It's this type of structure. But a one-way slab can still happen in this type of structure as well. We're going to see what defines a one-way and two-way slab. But for a one-way slab, the load just goes from the slab in one direction to that um, beam there and that beam there. So we need to determine whether it behaves like a one-way or two-way slab. So it behaves like a one-way slab if the aspect ratio is greater than two. The aspect ratio is L2 and L1, where L2 is the long length and L1 is the short length. So if that ratio, the long length, the short length is greater than two, we can say it behaves like a one-way slab. Just in, uh, intuitively, sort of, if your slab is really, really long, it's gonna behave more like a one-way slab. If your slab is shorter like this, it's gonna behave like a two-way slab. So let's talk a bit about how we go in this load process now. So just to quickly show you what happens, in a one-way slab, as we've said, it goes slab, joist, girder, column. Okay, so this can exist. It, it, it exists in this structure for sure, and it potentially can exist in this structure if you can show that the aspect ratio is greater than two. All right? If the aspect ratio is less than two, then it behaves like a two-way slab. In a two-way slab, the action is slab, a portion of that slab goes to uh, joist, and a portion goes to girder, and then they both feed into column in contrast to a one-way where it goes slab, joist, girder, column. Okay, so uh, this is very linear, it's direct, whereas two-way slab, a portion of the slab loading goes into joist, and a portion of the slab loading goes into girder, and then they both go into column. I hope that's quite clear, the difference between the two. So, this is for slab, this is how we would split up the slab. So we've seen one-way slab, that was this thing, when we looked, looked over here. So we're gonna ignore this for now, but looking now for two-way slab, we're going to see how these actions impact on um, the joists and girders. Okay, so for the joists and girders, looking at this square one first. If we take, say, that one over there, you can see we have a triangle loading pattern. All right, so it looks a bit like this, this triangle in red. Uh, we call this point there W max, the maximum UDL point. This little L is the distance from the edge to the uh, midpoint. And this big L is the total distance. Okay, so that's for the square. For the rectangular slab, on this uh, beam there, we have a trapezium, and on this beam here, we have a triangle. All right, so we have the triangle again. It's the same situation over there. And then for the, um, the longer beam, this one, we have a trapezium. And we call this uh, the maximum uh, distributed load W max. Now, what we need to do is these are quite complicated loading patterns, triangles and trapeziums. So we use this formula to convert these complicated loading patterns, the triangle and the trapezium, into just normal rectangular uh, UDLs called W dash. The formula is this, W dash equals W max, where W max in a triangle of those uh, points there, the, the, the maximum values, and W max in a trapezium is just where it flattens out, equals one minus four and three, little l, is the distance from the edge to W max. So in triangles, it's from there to there. From trapeziums, it's from there to there. So that little distance there. On L, the total distance, the total length of the beam, squared, okay? And, we, and that gives us the um, W dash, the equivalent rectangular UDL. So we're gonna be using this formula quite a bit. We're gonna see an example later on using this formula. I just wanted to introduce it now. And then once we work out all that, we can find um, we can find the load in the columns uh, based on this, okay? So the main thing I want you to get out of this video at the end of the day is just this summary over here, all right? For a one-way slab, the load path goes slab, joist, girder, column. And for a two-way slab, it goes slab, and a portion of that's taken by joist, a portion of that taken by girder, and then they both feed into the column, okay? And just by diagram, 
This is a one-way slab case because it's directly supported by joists and then girder. Okay, this one, it could be one-way or it could be two-way slab. You have to work out based on the aspect ratio. If it's one-way slab, um, you just use this load pattern. This, uh, yeah, this load pattern. If it's two-way slab, you're going to be using this load pattern with this type of distribution. Okay, with this type of stuff. Anyway, we're going to be doing two examples in this this topic where we're going to be looking at both one ways and two way slabs separately. So example one is using one way slab. Example two is with uh, two way slab. So I recommend you check them both out. Anyway, guys, hope that helps, and we'll see you in the next video. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit spoonfeedme.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.